What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 22 of Park to Prem. It's season number four today folks. We kick it off and we're back where we belong. Sandra's been on the phone. We're in the Northern Premier Division. No longer travelling down to Plymouth on the weekend. We can enjoy our weekends that little bit more knowing we are where we belong. And well if we just look at the season preview for this year... Whilst we are predicted to win the league, there's some pretty big teams in here. Gateshead, Matlock Town, uh, Morpeth, Farsley, Blythe Spartans, um, Altrincham who were relegated just last year, Gainsborough as well. Some teams that have been in the National League in recent years. And well, when you look at the Media Dream 11, for the first time in a little while, it's not just a sea of our own players. Yes, there is some real competition here. And whilst the likes of McLaughlin and Leighton Stewart are in the Media Dream 11, there are also three new players in the team for us. And well, we'll come on to them in just a second. I feel like it's worth starting off with the transfers in and out. And I will level with you. I've been a little bit of a busy beaver. Um, most of that has actually been signing players who have gone straight into the under-23s. Prospects released from teams in the Championship and the Premier League. Players who I feel like down the line could be very useful to us. But right now they perhaps don't solve too many problems. But before we talk about the ins, we need to talk about the outs. Tristan Skerritt has left us to join Morpeth. He actually left at the end of last year. He's gone to a divisional rival, and uh, he is a defender that has left us. And if you include Yarosh, who left in January last year, in the last eight months, we have lost four out of our starting back five. Our, our four defenders, our goalkeeper... There's a little bit of a fresh look there because, involuntarily, we've lost players. Tristan Skerritt's left us to go to a divisional rival. And then, during the preseason this year, a few big names have left us. So, to go through a few of the players first and foremost who have left us, Tom Nixon has gone off to Torquay. One of two players to depart was always more of a squad player. Similar story with Sam Leverett. Some of you may remember him. He'd never really made too much of a splash in the first team. Josh Scott has also gone to Torquay. He was another squad depth player that we signed last year. And then we move on to a few more significant departures. James Norris has left us. I had such high hopes for him. He was our starting left back for a lot of last season. I couldn't get him tied down to a new contract and he's elected to go and join Ipswich Town on a free transfer. That that hurts a little bit because I was quickly becoming a fan of this chap. He was doing absolute bits for us last year, but we've not been able to keep hold of him. So Tona has already left us and, well, we already knew he was going to leave us. He'd have made a pre-contract agreement with Cork. They're paying him £1.4,000 a week. That is money that I cannot compete with, unfortunately. So uh, whilst he didn't make much of an impact on the first team in terms of performances, he was one of our best players when you just looked at him on paper. Anyway, Tony McCulloch has left us. We signed him last April. Last episode, I think, it actually happened. He just left without saying anything to go and join Bucky Thistle in Scotland. I feel, I feel a little bit sad. I mean, it's not the end of the world. He would have been a good player to keep around, but I don't really know what to say. He never played for us. He just joined, and two months later, he was back to Scotland. I, I guess... He got homesick or something. Macaulay Power has left us to go to Dagenham and Redbridge. They play in the Vanarama National South. That's a big miss for us in the centre of the midfield. And, uh, well, you can see there's a few more big names in our team who have left us. Mr. International jetting off to Salford. Couldn't compete with his wage demands. He's gone on a free transfer to the League 2 side. He was absolutely key for us last season. Yeah, he's going to be a miss. He's perhaps the player who, out of everyone we've lost, I'm most concerned about. A few other players who left us. Jack Sims has gone to Halifax Town to be a squad player. Dylan Stevenson has joined Farsley. Again, was just one of the players in the under-23s. And Kieran Lloyd, again, squad depth player who we had last year, has left to join Marine. Uh, on the end, though, we have been busy, but a lot of these have been for the under-23s. You know, players for the future. We made a few more signings towards the end of the year. Um, some of these will feature in the first team, but I think what we'll do is we'll look at the first team um, rather than go through the transfers here, because if we just look at the under-23s, a lot of these players we signed have just gone straight into the under-23s, you know, just punts for the future as much as anything, hoping that they can develop into something. But in terms of the first team, things are looking quite good. We've got a squad right now of, as you can see here, 27 players, and overall balance I am happy with. Now, if you're paying a lot of attention, you might notice something different about this screen this year. And I'll, I'll give you a second to try and spot it, and it should be obvious, but if it's not, I'll give you I'll give you the clue. It's over on the right side here. 
And that is the fact that for the first time ever, we've actually been able to offer players proper contracts. Yes, we are actually giving players wages now. And, uh, well, the first player that I gave a contract to was Sonny Best. I said, you know what, mate? Loyal servant, have £200 a week to stay around. So he's still here, the 21-year-old. And uh, we've got him for another year, although... I'm not entirely sure how much he'll feature in the first team this year. But that was a big, big kind of step forward for us. You can see the overall balance is still very healthy at the club. Um, transfer budget and wage budget went up a little bit, but I'm not spending a massive amount of it. Although I guess into the wage budget we're each eating in a little bit. You might notice in terms of the players who have been offered wages, there's a few notable players in the first team who haven't been offered proper contracts. That's because I offered Leighton Stewart the chance to sign a contract that would take effect at the end of the season before we got the option to offer semi-pro contracts that involved an actual, you know, part-time role. So, Leighton Stewart, I would love to get you tied down on a proper contract, but you've got a provisionally agreed contract at the end of the year, which is another pay-as-you-go deal. Hopefully next year we can tie him down long-term. I don't want to lose any more players if we can avoid it. You will notice, however, when we sort the players by ability, a few notable additions to the team who are on permanent deals. So let's talk about them. The first player, Charlie Wellens, signed from Manchester United. What a player this guy is. He is absolutely insane for this level. £400 a week, a two-year contract as well. He has a value. If anyone wants him, they're going to have to offer me over £100,000. I'm going to demand that right now. Um, you can see in terms of dynamics, he's unhappy and he has been asking to move. Um, bit of a weird one. I signed him and made a promise that we would bring in some players who were former teammates of him. Signed him just before the season kind of ticked over. Towards the end of June, um, the game goes, hey, it's the end of the season and the start of the next one. He joined. A couple of days later, that point was passed. And then he went, hey, you broke the promise. You didn't bring anyone in. And I was sat there a little bit puzzled because... He arrived two days ago. So I'm hoping he's going to learn to forgive and forget. I have brought in a few token Manchester United former players to try and appease him. It hasn't worked so far. But in terms of what he offers us, fantastic, versatile player. I actually think he's going to be playing as an inverted winger for a lot of this year. We don't really operate with a traditional attacking midfielder. There's nothing to say that we won't at some point this year you know, change things up and do that. But I think right now he fits actually quite nicely as an inverted winger out on the left. Another player we've signed is Rodri, formerly of Manchester City. What a centre-back this guy is. Another player who has signed a two-year deal at the club. He has a few gaps in his game. His heading could be a little bit better, but his physicals are absolutely incredible. Not on massive wages at all. £250 a week, and a, I think we're paying him £50 per appearance. Two-year contract. That is an absolute bargain buy as far as I'm concerned. He's going to be a massive part of the first team this year, I feel like. And, well, defensively, that has had to be a big shake-up. Anyway, the last of the huge, huge additions to the team, although there have been more, is Lewis Warrington. He has joined us from Everton, and I like this guy a lot. He's another fantastic centre mid, perhaps the successor to Macaulay Power. Of course, we brought in Boxall towards the end of last year, and I bigged him up as being the solution to our deep-line playmaker problem. If we just compare him to Warrington... Just to give you an idea of kind of what we're comparing here, there is a significant gulf in quality. Lewis is just he's, he's insane. For this level, he's going to be top, top draw. Never made an appearance at Everton. He joins us only on a one-year deal, £300 a week. And uh, yeah, another huge addition to the midfield this year. So in terms of how we're going to shape up, I'm not going to change the system too drastically since last year. But naturally, because of the changes in defence... Things have had to change. So this is the team that we are going to start the season with. We have got Harker in goal. Obviously, he didn't play too much last year. After Yarosh left, he came in. He did okay for us. Eight clean sheets in 17. Um, his average ratings, and in fact, our average ratings across the board for our players have never been particularly great when it comes to goalkeepers. Hoping this year he can have a standout year for us. Midgley, who last year was in the under-23s, I've promoted to the first team. Obviously, we've lost Norris, our previous left-back. We lost a few of our backup left-backs as well on the departures. And I want to give this guy a chance. He's a consistent performer, very good pace. As far as wing-backs on attack go at this level, whilst you know the flair, the dribbling, the crossing can maybe be a tiny little bit better, he's actually very, very good. And I want to give him a chance to prove himself. He's only 19, obviously was released by Newcastle. Um, and I think he's got a point to prove. So keep an eye out for him at left-back. 
At centre-back, we've got Rodri Sorotto. I'm going to be calling him Rod or Rodri. And alongside him, we've got Parks. We've got Rodri Parks in the centre. That sounds like a lawyer firm to me. Um, but they are two fantastic centre-backs. Parks joins us from Hull City. I think there's a lot to like about this guy. Naturally fit, great heading, great marking, great tackling. I feel like him and Rodri alongside each other... They're quite complementary, you know, they're not too dissimilar and obviously Parks here can play a variety of positions at the back which is always useful for kind of changing things on the fly. That does mean that Malachlin, of all the right backs and defenders that we had to start last year who were in our starting eleven, he's the lone survivor right now. Um, he's on a lot of money as well, perhaps a little bit too much money, £350 per appearance. I went to offer him a new contract, we'll just see if he's lowered his demands, no, he wants £600 a week and a £100 appearance fee. Not a chance he's getting that, so he can jog on. The midfield, a little bit different. We've got Wellens, of, who of course has joined us out on the left. And then Harrison, who last year was really underwhelming at inverted winger. I've moved out onto the right, and we're going to try him as a winger and see what he can do. Because as a winger, he looks top, top draw. I'm hoping last year was a blip. You know, we played him slightly out of position in a role that perhaps he wasn't quite as well suited to. Another former Newcastle player who has a bit of a point to prove, and well... Out of all the midfielders who were with us for the majority of last year, he is the lone player there. In the centre of the midfield, we're going to go with Boxall as a centre mid on support, obviously. Um, we have got quite a lot of competition in the centre midfield position, but Boxall, I really like his vision, his first touch, his passing, his teamwork, his work rate. His physicals are pretty well-rounded too. Um, he's my kind of centre mid, and he's so good on set pieces, and we do lack a really good set piece taker, particularly from free kicks. So um, that's the reason that he's going to start ahead of some of the other players that we have. And then up top, I've not talked about the striking position, and the reason for that being, it's not really changed. We still have Kumwenda. He's going to be starting alongside Leighton Stewart, who has just continued to get on leaps and bounds. You'll notice the mentoring group we showed last episode is showing some improvements to his determination as well, which is good. And then on the bench, things not too drastically different here. We have Pretty, who is a good little centre-back. Last year, we lent on him a little bit, and he was somewhat underwhelming before Skerritt kind of emerged. We do still have Alex Evans when it comes to centre-backs in the first team too. Andre Brooks is going to be our really versatile full-back option for this year. Still training him to play right-back. He's picked it up a little bit. Obviously, he's not got the best technicals or mentals, but as far as an impact sub in the wing-back position goes... I feel like just his pure pace and stamina is going to terrorise teams. It's going to terrify them. I'm hoping that he's going to do the business for us if we need him to. Another new addition to the team is Alex Bradley. This guy is a Finnish international. And, uh, well, you can see, looking at his past playing history here, started at West Brom, had a loan spell with Burton in League One, where he played a few games, and then over the last few years, he's played in a few different divisions. Uh, he's played in League One for six games. He then went and played... In the Vikhausliga, I'm going to say, in Finland. Uh, he made 10 appearances there, got two goals. He was released at the end of his contract. We've signed him up, and I feel like as far as sub-impact centre mids go, he could be very good. He would probably start ahead of Boxall if it wasn't for Boxall's better set-piece taking. I mean, they're kind of different in a way. But you could argue that Alex you know, has significantly better mentals, technicals perhaps slightly edged out. Um, but on the whole, I feel like he's a really good addition to the side. And yeah, we've got him in on quite a small amount of money. I think his appearance fee, £300 per game. I, I like that a lot. Expect big things. Aaron Sabir holds down a spot on the bench. Was underwhelming last year, but on paper, he looks like he's got it all. So I'm going to keep the faith. That might not work out. Isaiah Jones is a new addition to the team. He has joined from Middlesbrough. A little bit of a leader in the team. Not the most crazy kind of attacking technical player in the world um, in terms of stuff like finishing, long shots could be better, Ta he doesn't know how to defend at all. But as far as super pacey young winger, bring him on with 20 minutes left, can play either side, I think he can offer us something this year. I'm keen to see how he does. You'll notice Sonny Best not on the bench. He, he might find himself in place of Isaiah Jones. And then the last two players on the bench, Akeem Rose, familiar face, of course, training him currently to play out on the left. And Max Voltman is in the team too. So, yeah, the attacking position hasn't changed a great deal. And neither has the goalkeeper. Um, but everything else has seen some changes. Obviously, Rodri and Parks are going to have pressure on them. When you look at the average age of our starting eleven, my word, is it young. You think back to last year where we had Mr. International and Alex Evans, you know, the kind of getting close to 30 in the defence. Now Ryan McLaughlin is the 
kind of lone piece of experience in the first team. I guess Harker at 23 has a decent amount too. Outside of the players on the bench, plenty of familiar faces here. Alex Evans, Jermaine Anderson, uh, Romario Vieira, Josh Barnes, little squad player for the future, can play left back and centre mid. Um, we lost a lot of our backup left backs and our young left backs. So we've signed him from Nottingham Forest. Not the craziest wing back necessarily, but, you know, good versatile player. Sonny Best. I mean, he's got that permanent contract now, but he's he's not in the starting eleven or the bench for today's game, which I feel bad about. Julian Clarence and Donnelly, uh, or oh, is it Donnelly? Donnelly? Uh, David Connolly. Maybe we should just call him Donnelly for short. But Julian Clarence, very good player, bit of a backup player for the future. And David Connolly, two youngsters who I think will feature in the first team at some point. Just not quite ready for it yet. And while waiting in the wings in the under-23s, you can see we've got a lot of these 18-year-olds who were released by various Premier League and Championship clubs. If injury crises come in, if some of our players who aren't on permanent contracts get poached away, they may well find themselves in first-team contention. And Chanka Zimba's down here. I've got a lot of centre-mids now, and on paper, whilst he's putting the performances on the pitch, he's not wowed me. You know, I feel like we, we've really overhauled the midfield and the defence this year with the likes of Warrington and Wellens joining us who can play centre mid. Obviously, Alex Bradley as well can play centre mid. I did weigh up releasing Jermaine Anderson or Romario Vieira to give Zimba the chance, but I can't bring myself to do it just yet. So this is the team we're going to go with. It has a familiar feel in terms of attackers. Obviously, Harrison holds down his spot. McLaughlin holds down his spot. Midgley comes from the under-23s. Harker holds down his spot. Keep an eye out, I guess, for Rodri and Parks in the middle. They're, they're the big players. And also Wellens, who is on £400 a week, is on a two-year deal, is our star man as far as I'm concerned. I feel like him and Stewart should just set this light, this league ablaze. He almost reminds me of Deshaun Bernard. Obviously, Deshaun Bernard was a centre-back, whereas Wellens is an attacking midfielder. But it's that example of a very, very good Manchester United youngster wanting to take the step down to Tau Law and being willing to take that step down and showing them, hopefully just showing everyone what they're made of. The other good thing is we can't lose him on a free. Like If we're going to sell him, a team has to go and throw some money at us. And that degree of security allows me to just focus a bit more on the squad building. Obviously, with all the pre-contracts certain players have signed, it might be a little while before we see the permanent deal signed as, oh my gosh, Wellens has hit the crossbar. Harrison, get it in. Can't get it in. But yeah, right now, there's not a huge amount of first-team players on their, you know, the permanent kind of contracts. Um, a few have signed pre-contracts that aren't, you know, the part-time deals. I'm hoping, you know, we're going to get promotion this year. It's a fiercely competitive league where only one team goes up. But if we can get promotion, I think that will open up the opportunity to suddenly tie down the majority of the first team on part-time contracts. And then the days of which we have players poached away from us, they'll be gone. They'll be protected. Anyway, we need to win against Whitby here. It's a midweek game. Some games kicked off at the weekend. We weren't invited to the, the start of season party. So we go here in the midweek, away from home, not easy. Wellens, what can you do for us? He's had, is that a shot or a cross? I'm very concerned if that's a cross. I'm almost more concerned if he's made the decision to shoot there. Bland pumping the ball out. Wellens wins his header. I feel like we should highlight Wellens. I've got, I've, just, I've got a great feeling about him. He's incredible. He's our best player by a mile. As far as I'm concerned, alongside Stewart. And, well, speaking of the devil, look at him go. 14 dribbling. He runs past everyone. He tucks it into the top corner. Rodri with the assist. And, well, if the question was going to be asked, can Leighton Stewart step it up like he did last year where he was our standout striker and show us what he's made of? I feel like he's quite emphatically answered that question. Dances between two defenders, just outpaces the second centre-back of Whitby Town. Slots it into the top corner. Lovely finish. Not, not sure about the celebration, I'll be honest, Leighton, but I'm not going to complain. We're a goal up, and we can maybe relax a little bit. Last season wasn't plain sailing all the way through, especially at the start of the league year. Sorotto, Rodri, Rodri, oh, he's offside. He's off. I thought we were about to start the, the legend of Rodri, and he's 8 heading and 13 jumping. Release from Man City, told he wasn't good enough in the air. Leaps like a salmon. It's a great header as well. That's so unfortunate. I feel like I was in the middle of a point before Rodri did that. But we'll just move on. Wellens is looking stressed. 
that's good. Everyone else reacted well, so I'm going to put the fact that he reacted badly purely down to the fact that he hates my guts. Maybe with time he'll learn to love me. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. I'm trying to think what I was talking about. Oh, the league. Yes, the league this year. Only one team goes up, four teams go into a playoffs. I want I want to get promoted this year. We, we should be getting promoted, but... I've looked through Gateshead's team. Gateshead are predicted to finish second. They've got some very, very good players, it seems like. And players who are on a £1,000 a week level of good. So, this isn't going to be simple. Rodri. 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 What are you doing? He's gone from hero to absolute villain. You wazzock, Rodri. You absolute wazzock. What are you doing, mate? What are you doing? I miss her. Didn't miss her there. Slots it away. There's 20 minutes left. Let's make some subs. It was all going so well. Wellens has not played well. I'm going to take him off. We're going to give Isaiah Jones a chance to show what he can do. The speed demon out on the wing. Oh, I can't believe that. Harrison's not played that well out on the right either. So you know what? We'll bring in Aran Sabia there. And come Wender, Henry. Do I want to take him off for Voltman? You know what? I don't think I do. I'm going to swap Warrington and Box all around. And then Warrington, who's underwhelmed as well, is going to come off for Alex Bradley. Now, Alex Bradley has 12 long shots. And the tendency likes to take long shots. I'm hoping that he's going to bang in some Gerard-esque finishes for us from centre mid. See, see what I did there? He's finish. F finishes? No. Aaron Sabia, off the bench, cross it in. Stewart, oh my gosh, what a save by Blank at the near post. Tips it round the post to keep Whitby Town in this tie. Now what can we do? Boxall, to try and put it into the middle. On the back post, Kumwenda, who I've elected to keep on the pitch. I really hope he can repay our faith as Stewart is hacked down from behind by Dixon. Boxall, you didn't have the best of corners. Can you have an incredible free kick? He hits it, he bends it just over. The keeper looked a little bamboozled in his attempt, or rather, lack of attempt to stop it. Midgley, that is a looping throw, my friend. I didn't know he could do that. Lynch, can't get to it. Aran Sabia, playing the inverted winger. Fred it through to Stewart. Finish that, Leighton. Finish that, Leighton. Bland, not the most conventional of techniques from the goalkeeper there. He has face-planted as he's tipped it over. But it's another golden opportunity. Three clear-cut chances, two half chances. We've not been able to find the breakthrough yet. And there's not much more time to find the breakthrough. I need to demand more from the boys. We're having a lot of highlights here. There's another attack on the go. Kumwenda, don't give away the ball here. Gets it forward to Jones. Run Isaiah. Run Isaiah. Look at him go. Look at him go to Aaron Sabir. Have a go. Hit it, mate. Have a go. Why not? That's why not. You've missed the target. Whose idea was it for him to shoot from there? I'm going to go very attacking. I'm going to go for the jugular. Boxall whips it in. Back post. Who's headed it in? Aran Sabia has. I don't know why I've rolled the R there. Boxall, set-piece specialist. He showed it at the end of last episode with his, uh, well, his two assists in the last league game. And, well, he's found the sub. Devontae Aran Sabia. Sabia, a player who didn't really have a much of an impact last year. Don't remember saying this guy's name a great deal. He's inconsistent. He hates big matches. He has the decision-making of a platypus. I don't know if platypuses have good decision-making or not, but I couldn't think of an animal. The decision-making of a platypus, it doesn't matter. He's got his head on it. I have gone from very attacking to attacking, but I don't really want to go off attacking. I don't want to invite pressure onto ourselves by sitting back. Ball is lumped forward. Stewart's going to chase it. I mean, you respect the hustle by him, but it's not going to amount to anything. And now Whitby with the ball. I want to enjoy my fish and chips on Whitby Bay after this game. Please don't mean make it so I can't enjoy them. I don't want any salt or tears in my chips. Stewart picks it up. Fred through Cumwender. What a ball that is. What a goal that is. Can we discuss that pass by Leighton Stewart? The goal scorer turns provider. It's 3-1. It's done. Henry Kumwenda, the schoolboy. I don't know. I don't know what's happening with him now. I feel like he's probably got a way up dropping out of university to play football full time with us next year. Threaded through. Lovely finish into the bottom corner. And maybe he's not wearing a school uniform anymore. Maybe that's his business attire. He's graduated. 3-1. It finishes. We will take that all day, every day. It 
wasn't perhaps as convincing as the result would let on. If you looked at that in isolation and went, wow, you won 3-1, you'd think it was comfortable. Absolutely not. Two goals in the last five minutes absolutely saved our bacon. But we'll take it. Apparently we hammer Whitby Town. Look at that. Leighton Stewart at 8.9 rating. Rodri apparently impressed on his debut. I guess, I guess we'll just ignore the thing that we saw. I mean, it's a good job that Rodri was bailed out. I feel like the press have got it confused if they think he impressed on his debut. Hmm. Mm, okay, I guess they didn't watch the same game as us. Where will Whitby down Town predict to finish? 10th. So they're a mid-table team. We, we look pretty convincing about against them on the whole, I felt like. You can see here, this is a bit of a depressing existence, isn't it? They've been in the same division for the last 20 years. I, feel, I almost feel bad for them. But yeah, good result there. That sets us on our way quite nicely. In terms of cup competitions this year, we've got the Emirates Cup, we've got the Bill Base FA Trophy, and we've also got the Alan Turvey Cup. I don't know what teams are in the Alan Turvey Cup, so if you are familiar, please do let me know. Looks like a cup competition that starts in October time, maybe? Maybe September? It looks like a qualifying round. We'll, we'll see if we get drawn in it and exactly what happens. You can see our fixture schedule is very, very condensed. We've got Gateshead, who are a big rival, but that's kind of quite soon. If they're going really strong, we'll play them. I'm not sure why it's shown the same fixture twice there, because I've already checked. We do play them away from home in December. But um, if they're going strong, that might be a good game to come back for. If not, you know, we'll play it by ear. We'll see how the league is shaping up. We've got a crazy, crazy big, big busy August. We've got uh, nine games in a month. That's mad. That is... We're going to be rotating things a little bit. I'm sure we will get fairly familiar with our squad as the year goes on. You can see, in terms of money, we have got a little bit of financial kind of stuff we can play with. We've not spent any transfer budget. I could put it into the wage budget if there was one or two more big players who stood out to us. Two players who I have kind of been looking at is Callum Nickel, Nysel? I don't know. Nysel sounds better. And also this guy, Josh Anderson. Neither player wants to join us, but I've been attending some of the FC United and Manchester games in the hopes that he might be interested in joining us. He currently plays in the same tier as us, but in the central division with FC United. He looks quite good at a glance, and he's tipped as one of the, their league's best players. If you don't know, if, if you've got a player who's not 100% interested in joining you, you can obviously declare your interest and in all that stuff, but you can also click on matches that have a dash. That means that you've not got a game at the same time, and you can attend the games. So I don't know if attending the game against Dorking's going to make a world of difference, but we can give it a shot. He's considered their key player. He's only 19. I'd quite like a piece of him, I feel like, but, well we'll see we'll see I, it may amount to nothing but I feel like it's worth knowing he's my big target right now um, who I'm hoping we might be able to get but it might be a bit of a long shot but anyway guys that's going to wrap up everything from me today obviously a bit of a crazy pre-season it was a massive massive shame to lose so much of our defence during the off-season um, we tried to do as best we can obviously Midgley um, Rodri Parks and Harker They've got a bit of a point to prove. Elsewhere, I feel like we strengthened, well, the attacking position I was pretty happy with after last year. Um, hopefully, you know, a bit of a gelling period, getting to know period. Um, our players, you know, will start to gel and start to play even better than they already have. And maybe Charlie Wellens will stop hating me and decide he does want to stay. We'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, guys, that is going to be everything from me today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have enjoyed, drop a like on the video. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.